Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage Tube Microphone Review Time! Today I am covering the Warm Audio WA251. This microphone costs about $850. I did buy it with my own money, and if you want to check it out, I'll throw some links in the description. All of my recording settings will also be, also be listed in the description, as well as the doobly-doo. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. You're going to get a wooden storage box for the microphone, the microphone itself, a shock mount with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a 5 meter 7 pin XLR to 7 pin XLR cable, the power supply and the required power cable, a little bit of documentation, and some stickers. Then as far as the build quality, this microphone feels pretty well put together. It has an all-metal body as well as a metal mesh grill with a tiny bit of give to it. As we move around the microphone, there are no buttons or switches on the mic. On the bottom, you will find the 7-pin XLR port. Here is a quick look at the internals in case you want to look at them, the tube, the transformer, or whatever, all of that. There you go. The power supply feels very robust. It is all metal. On the top, you have this handle, and on the bottom, you have four feet to keep it from sliding around. On the front, you have the polar pattern selector switch. You have the seven pin XLR input, a three pin XLR output. On the back, you have a power light. You have a voltage selector switch. You have the plug for the power supply, and you have a really satisfying power switch. Just listen to this thing. All of the connections feel good with minimal play, and FYI, they do not disclose where their gear is made, but they point out that a few components are made in the USA and France. I am assuming the rest of the microphone is made in China, though. I'm not going to read the specs to you, but I will have them listed in the description, and I will have them up on screen in case you want to pause and take a closer look at anything, and if anything stands out, I'll discuss it in the conclusion. Now let's do a quick comparison between all of the polar patterns on the 251, starting off on the cardioid polar pattern, and here's how it sounds. Now I am on the omnidirectional polar pattern of the 251 at the same distance and same gain setting. I may have to adjust the level in post, but here is how the omni pattern sounds. And finally, I am on the figure of eight polar pattern, so it picks up in the front and the rear. Same distance, same gain setting, and here is how this sounds. Cardioid pattern moving around to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to the rear of the mic, there you go. Continuing to the second 90 degree angle, there it is. And then going to the front of the cardioid pattern. Omni pattern moving around to 90 degrees. There shouldn't be any massive change as we go all the way around to the rear of the mic, continuing to rotate to the second 90 degree angle and then back on the front on omnidirectional. Now on figure eight, moving around to 90 degrees, the first dead area, there it is, continuing around to the second lobe of sensitivity at the rear, that is that, continuing to the second dead area at 90 degrees, and then going around to the front of the mic on figure eight. Now let's see how this microphone does at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please provide pizza pronto, pals. Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect while trying to avoid clipping, and here is how it sounds. Now I'm six inches off of the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about one foot away from the 251, about two feet away from the 251, and about four feet away from the WA251. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gamers, now I'm typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the 251 sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a relatively well-treated room. And now that I've spent 15 minutes setting up the microphone, here is a five second sample of how the microphone sounds six inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated room.
Now I want to see how effective the microphone and mount are at rejecting shocks, so I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. I am also annoying, so I am going to tap on the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone we're reviewing and a bunch of other microphones that are available so we can hear how it stacks up against the competition and understand how this fits within the market. Starting on the microphone we're reviewing, I am 6 inches off of the 251 with my gain set at 1 o'clock and here's how it's sounding. Starting on the Audio-Technica AT2020, which is a solid-state condenser microphone, I am 6 inches off, my gain on the 18i20 is at 1 o'clock, this microphone costs about $100, and here is how it compares to the 251. Back again for a palate cleanser on the 251, here is how it sounds, let's jump to the next mic. Now I am on the Neat King B version 2, which is another solid state condenser microphone. I am 6 inches off, my gain is still set at 1 o'clock. This microphone costs about $180, and here is how this sounds compared to the warm audio. Let's go back and do a bunch more comparisons. Here is another sample of the warm audio 251, same distance, same gain setting. Let's hear some more microphones. Next, I am on the Earthworks SR117, which is a relatively neutral and flat handheld condenser microphone. I am 6 inches off of this thing. The gain on the 18i20 was increased to 3 o'clock. This microphone costs about $200, and here is how it sounds compared to a multi-pattern tube condenser studio microphone. Let's do some more. Back for another palate cleanser on the Warm Audio 251, nothing has changed. Check the lower third, let's hear some more. Now I am on the NT1 Gen 5, which is another solid state condenser microphone. I am 6 inches off, my gain is still set at 1 o'clock. This microphone costs about $250, and here is how it sounds compared to the Warm Audio. Let's do some more. All right, I am back to clear out your ear holes with the 251 again. Here is how it sounds. What do you think? Let's do some more. Now I am on the Avantone CV12 on the cardioid polar pattern with no pad and no filters engaged. I am 6 inches off. My gain on the 18i20 is set at 12 o'clock. This microphone, I believe, now goes for about $400, so a bit less expensive than the 251, but here is how this sounds compared to the warm audio. I don't know how many we've done, I don't know how many we're doing, but this is the 251 again, so you can hear it in between each comparison. Let's do some more. Now I am on the Warm Audio WA67, which is a multi-pattern tube condenser microphone. I am 6 inches off on the cardioid polar pattern, no pad and no filters. Gain is set at 12 o'clock on the 18i20. This microphone costs about $900, so slightly more than the 251. And here is how it sounds compared to its brother or sister or sibling or something. We have a few more microphones to go, so here is a palate cleanser on the Warm Audio 251. Let's hear another one. Now I am on the Warm Audio WA47, another multi-pattern tube condenser microphone. I am set on the cardioid polar pattern, 6 inches off, gain on the 18i20 is set at 12 o'clock. This microphone costs about $950, I believe. And here is how this sounds compared to its sibling, the 251. Which one do you like better? We have two more microphones to go, so this is your penultimate palate cleanser on the Warm Audio 251. That's enough talking. Let's jump to the second to last mic. Now I am on the Neumann Hello Neumann U87AI, which is another solid state condenser microphone. I am on the cardioid polar pattern with no pad and no filters engaged. My gain is still set at one o'clock. I am six inches away. This microphone costs about $3,700, so quite a bit more than the warm audio. 
but that is how it sounds compared to the 251. Let's do one more comparison. And we have one more microphone to go, so this is your final palette cleanser on the 251. Let's jump to that last microphone right. Now I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, U67 reissue. I am on the cardioid polar pattern, no pad and no filters. I am six inches off. My gain on the 18i20 is set at 12 o'clock. This microphone costs about $7,900. This is not a fair comparison, but hey, I had the microphone out, so why not include it? Now you know how the 251 sounds like compared to the U67 reissue. That is going to conclude the comparisons. Let's move on. of the mics I need to find me a life for wife I think the terms are kind of interchangeable because a wife would force me to get a life she ain't gonna let me do what I do there's too many microphones Bandrew you gotta get rid of them I, <laughs> I don't know why my wife sounds like that let's not focus on anything let's not question anything let's just move on all right, I have to admit, I have never used an Elam 251 proper, so I have no idea how close they got to that. But as a microphone on its own, I quite like this thing. And first up, as far as pros, the microphone and the shock mount did a fantastic job at shock rejection. It picked up very little of the low end rumble when I hit the desk or when I tapped on the boom arm. The off axis coloration on this thing is also very mild and inoffensive. And as far as tube microphones go, this has a relatively low self noise of only around 12 dBA. And then as far as cons, the microphone doesn't do an amazing job at plosive rejection. And I know it doesn't really work with this microphone type because there's no way to mount it, but I really wish it had a microphone clip as well as the shock mount because that would make placing the microphone in small spaces like an isolation cab significantly easier. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the WA251? As far as the overall sound, I would classify this as slightly V-shaped but still relatively smooth. You do get a bit of heft in the bass and low mids which can add some weight to your recording. Then the mids, I wouldn't say they're recessed, but I would say they come across less forward than the other microphones we compared it against. But then we get to the treble and air frequencies and up there you get a little bit of a lift, which is exactly what you should expect out of a 251 clone. But I don't find the upper frequencies to be overly bright and I find them to stay relatively smooth. On the electric guitar, you're getting some good bass and a really detailed top end. On the acoustic guitar, I find this very cool sounding because you have such a heavy low end, a bit of a more neutral midsection, and then a detailed and articulate top end. I thought it sounded great on that instrument. For singing vocals, I think that's my favorite application for this microphone. It offers just the right amount of support in the bass and low mids. The mids are clear and open sounding, and then you get that shimmer and bump in the treble and air frequencies, but it's not overdone, it's not harsh, it maintains that smooth character. And finally, for spoken word, I quite liked it here because it offers enough support in the bass and low mids. The mids are clear and open without sounding scooped or hollow and without sounding congested. And then the top end gives you enough articulation and detail, but it doesn't come across harsh or piercing or sibilant. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Warm Audio WA-251? Yes, I would. 
I found the sound of this thing to be quite enjoyable. I liked the weight in the low end. I enjoyed the open sounding mids and the slightly brighter top end, but it still maintains that smooth character and that gooiness, which I think may come from the transformer inside. So sound quality, I really enjoyed it. The build quality, I have zero complaints about this thing. And as far as the specs and the performance, I have zero deal breakers. So if you like the sound of this microphone, I think that it's definitely worthy of your consideration. But with that being said, I always point this out when I cover clone microphones. I have never used a 251, so I have no idea how close they got to the actual thing. So if you are buying this microphone, I advise you to buy this microphone only if you like the sound of this microphone. Do not buy this microphone because you like the sound of the 251. Do not buy this expecting to get a $10,000 microphone for $900 because likely you aren't going to. You are getting a very good sounding microphone, but buy it based on its own merits as opposed to some legendary microphone that they just named it after. All right, that's all that I've got for you today. I really appreciate you coming by and spending your time with me. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hated it, big ol' thumbs down. Huge thank you to the supporters of this channel. Their financial support allows me to buy this gear to review it. So thank you to them. And again, thank you to you for coming by and spending your time watching. I love you. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Whoa, whoa, boop.